Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for Tides TV, uh, where we're going to be talking about neoantigen peptide therapies and personalized medicine. Um, I'm here today with Dr. Samantha Zeroff, who's a product manager in the neoantigen peptide group at Genscript. Welcome, Samantha. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Great. Well, I've got some questions for you because I know that the peptide uh, a new antigen area is a really kind of hot area of, of study right now and a lot of interest in that field. So uh, some of the questions we'd love to chat with you about today are, number one, what are new antigens and how do they relate to personalized cancer immunotherapy? Sure. So neoantigens are new or novel cancer antigens, which are present on the cancerous tissue but not expressed within wild type tissue. They are expressed within individual tumors or tumor cells of a specific patient rather than being shared amongst patients suffering from one type of cancer. They're expressed as peptides within cancerous tissue from single amino acid deletions or insertions. And because of how they're generated, they tend to be highly hydrophobic in nature, as well as having a strong tendency to aggregate. However, since they are minimally affected by antigen escape or weak immunogenicity, they make great targets for immunotherapy. In terms of personalized cancer immunotherapy, neoantigens are used as the primary target to initiate their immune response against a patient's tumor. This personalized treatment usually begins by sequencing the patient's tumor and then comparing it to healthy tissue as well as to other cancers of the same type. From there, clinicians will use bioinformatic tools to identify the mutinome, which is basically a peptidome comprising of patient-specific tumor mutations, which are not common amongst the tumor type or healthy tissue. Because these targets are so unique, they are not recognized as self-antigens, and like many common tumor-associated antigens, and therefore they elicit a very strong immune response. There are four reasons why neoantigens are preferred targets for personalized immunotherapies. First, normally neoantigens are not expressed at high enough levels to be tracked by the immune system, but because they are not recognized as self-antigens, like common tumor-associated antigens or TAS, they are highly immunogenic. Therefore, direct targeting can enhance the natural immunogenicity of neoantigens to elicit a strong anti-tumor killing immune response. Secondly, once a neoantigen forms, there is a low chance of it mutating again and leading to therapeutic antigenic escape, as it is not an important protein for oncolytic survival. Third, some neoantigen therapeutics, such as personalized cancer vaccines, tend to target multiple neoantigens simultaneously. This avoids the possibility of immune escape if one neoantigen was to mutate and be untargetable. And lastly, each neoantigen can be matched to specific T cell receptors or TCRs, and therefore their immune response can be closely analyzed in vitro before being used as a possible therapeutic. It's a pretty fascinating field just hearing all that uh, kind of science behind it all. Um, I actually recently saw a, uh, a pipeline report of uh, peptide neoantigen neoantigen therapies in development, um, and it just listed all the companies and the kind of the different therapeutics coming forward uh, in the field. And, it, you know, so leading to the next question, sort of what are the different modalities of neoantigen-based therapeutics in development? Sure. So neoantigens are making a big buzz as preferred targets for personalized immunotherapies, specifically personalized cancer vaccines or PCVs and T-cell therapies. PCVs work similarly to infectious disease vaccines in that they introduce small peptide components of the biological threat that you're trying to initiate an immune response against. And in the case of PCVs, this will be patient-specific cancer neoantigens. Since every PCV is generated for a specific patient, the first step in production will be to take a tumor biopsy in order to identify neoantigen candidates through bioinformatics. The top neoantigen peptide candidates will be synthetically produced and used for in vitro functionality screening in order to confirm the predicted activity of each candidate. From these results, clinicians will first decide on the 20 or so neoantigens which they plan to use for the PCV, and secondly, decide which modality they will use to introduce those neoantigens to a patient's lymphatic system. The most common modalities include neoantigen DNA, mRNA, peptide, or pulsed antigen presenting cells mixed with varying delivery vehicles and adjuvants. Once formalized, the vaccine will be placed directly into the patient's lymphatic system through injection in order to be processed and presented by patient APCs and initiate a T-cell-based anti-tumor killing immune response against cancerous tissue expressing those neoantigen epitopes. Secondly, there's personalized T-cell therapies, which are almost identical to off-the-shelf T-cell therapies and that their goal is to target patient or healthy donor T-cells to the tumor to bind to a tumor biomarker and initiate an anti-tumor killing response. 
In order to produce a personalized T-cell therapy, neoantigen candidates are selected in a similar manner to how they are characterized for PCDs. From there, an MHC-matched T-cell will be engineered to express neoantigen-specific TCRs. Once expanded, these cells will be reinfused back into the patient in order to initiate tumor killing. However, just like PCVs, there are many modalities for T-cell therapies, the most common being standard TCR exchange or, more commonly, chimeric antigen receptor T-cell therapy, better known as CAR-T. Interesting. Great. Production is always the key, though, I hear, right? So what makes neoantigen peptides so difficult to produce? So neoantigen peptides tend to be highly difficult to produce and will require all different types of synthesis in order to produce highly pure peptides at required yields. Specifically, neoantigen peptides can be difficult to synthesize because of five characteristics, length, charge, hydrophobicity, yield, and purity. For length, neoantigens tend to be 9 to 11 amino acids, representing the specific epitope, or they'll be larger than 25 amino acids in order to be processed and presented by antigen-presenting cells onto MHC. Peptides over 20 amino acids tend to be difficult to synthesize and will usually require a combination of microwave and solid phase synthesis. For peptide charge, because neoantigens are not only are sorry are only expressed in cancer, they tend to contain charge-modifying amino acids, which would not be seen within natural tumor-associated antigens. Many synthetic steps only work with specific isoelectric points. And therefore, the further from neutral a peptide is, the synthesis will be more difficult. Third, because neoantigens are produced from random amino acid indels throughout the peptide, hydrophobic side chains are bound to be introduced within the sequence. These hydrophobic amino acids will lead to a stronger chance of aggregation and therefore limited solubility in water, which in turn makes purification very difficult. Neoantigen peptide synthesis can also be very difficult because each application within the various stages of therapeutic development requires completely different yields, mass, purity, and percentage of target peptide within a sample. Because of the flexibility required, it can be cumbersome to find a reliable provider which is able to accommodate yields ranging from large microscale libraries of half a milligram to synthesis of gram levels of one individual peptide. Because of this, GenScript has tailored its neoantigen peptide service in order to be able to make hydrophobic peptides at the quality and purity that you need. Interesting. So lots of challenges with these complex types of molecules. Yes, extremely. So how does GenScript's platform for new antigen synthesis circumvent a lot of the issues you just talked about? In order to accomplish difficult neoantigen peptide synthesis, we at GenScript have developed our own neoantigen peptide synthesis platform, which utilizes reliable technologies and tools to achieve a 95% success rate specifically for these difficult neoantigen peptides. This platform can be divided into four main stages. In the first stage, every neoantigen peptide sequence which comes through our order system is analyzed by our proprietary neopre bioinformatics algorithm in order to determine synthetic difficulty and the best method to synthesize each peptide based on its predicted difficulty. In the second stage of our platform, those neoantigen peptides will be synthesized according to the recommendation of our neopre algorithm and our peptide experts using one or a combination of our high-end synthetic technologies, ranging from manual liquid or solid phase, automated microwave technology, and our recombinant expression or chemical ligation, as well as our optimized technologies such as high sin and double coupling. Well, antigen peptide has been synthesized using our neopre and synthetic technologies. They go through stringent quality control based on individual customer and application needs. All GenScript peptides undergo total quality management testing, including mass spectrometry and analytical high-performance liquid chromatography, or HPLC, analysis throughout the peptide synthesis and purification process through our AccuPEP quality control service. In addition to the standard COA document, GenScript offers an additional 12 quality control services, including our endotoxin analysis and removal service. I don't know if you know, but endotoxins are lipopolysaccharides, which are the major components of the cell walls of gram-negative bacteria. When they get introduced into custom peptide preparations during synthesis, they can stimulate a plethora of unwanted immune reactions in B cells, macrophages, and stimulate T cell expansion even at low concentrations to ruin your experiments. To enhance your experimental results, GenScript now offers custom peptide with guaranteed endotoxin control service to reduce endotoxin levels to 10 EU per milligram, which is ideal for most cellular assays. We also offer guaranteed TFA measurements and removal or trifluoric acetic acid. 
It's a strong acid commonly used to cleave synthesized peptides from solid base resins and is also used to improve HPLC performance in the peptide purification step. Although TFA is important, residual TFA in custom peptides can cause inexplicable discrepancies in subsequent assay data, which is why at Genscript we can guarantee TFA values of less than 1% in exchange for acetate or formate. The last step of our synthesis platform is peptide optimization, in which we can design seven different types of peptide libraries in order to narrow down the perfect neoantigen sequence. The most popular peptide library design services for neoantigen peptides are our alanine scanning, overlapping, and T cell truncation libraries. In an alanine scanning library, each amino acid will subsequently be replaced with an alanine. In turn, this will allow the end user to determine the most important individual amino acids to peptide function. As opposed to an alanine scanning library, which replaces individual amino acids, an overlapping library simply deletes amino acids over a certain threshold. Because of this, it is great for identifying where a neoantigen epitope is within an entire neoantigen peptide sequence. Lastly, T cell truncation libraries are similar to overlapping libraries, except you can decide on multiple epitope lengths to put into one pool in order to tease out the perfect length of your neoantigen or T cell receptor. Wow, it sounds like your uh, platform, uh, you know, has has uh, you know solutions for a lot of these issues, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, looking to the future, what is Genscript's plan for your neoantigen peptide service in the future? At Genscript, we're constantly enhancing our capabilities in order to produce the highest quality reagents possible for the scientific community. In terms of neoantigen peptides, we currently focus on research used only grade peptides or RUO for functional screening, animal studies and post-ingestion efficacy analysis. However, within the next year or two, Genscript plans to launch its fully GMP neoantigen service in order to provide the personalized immunotherapy community with a reliable provider of difficult neoantigen peptides. We're planning to continue our highly technical approach to peptide synthesis in order to ensure that no patient misses out on their perfect treatment because of an untrustworthy neoantigen peptide production. And lastly, in terms of RUO peptides, we're continuing to upgrade our synthetic methodologies and our bioinformatics in order to synthesize every possible peptide for the neoantigen community. We are also expanding our current service to focus on T-cell activation as a whole in order to provide high-quality peptides for applications like LA spots, flow cytometry, cytotoxicity assays, and even MHC tetramer assays. Great. Yeah, one of the things you just mentioned kind of hit me, kind of it's all about the patient, right? And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so pretty exciting. Well, thank you so much. This has been fascinating to learn a little bit about some of the things you guys are doing in neoantigens and personalized medicine. And I thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thanks.